Alright guys, Dominic here for Kick Guru, and after the game's 1.2 update, AMD GPUs now have full support for ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077. If we cast our minds back to the game's launch in December, only NVIDIA RTX cards could use ray tracing in the game, but now any AMD RX 6000 series GPU can enable the full suite of ray trace effects. So in this video, we are going to be benchmarking all of AMD's RGNA2 based GPUs to see exactly how well they can cope with the ray tracing effects in Cyberpunk, while also comparing that performance to the likes of the NVIDIA RTX 30 series. To do this, we used our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around an i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all cores. That's paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, and we also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. We made sure that the game was freshly updated to version 1.2 and the latest drivers were used as of March the 30th. So for AMD, that was the Adrenaline 20.3.2 driver, whereas for Nvidia, we used the 465.89 driver. I do also want to make it clear that in this video, we're only gonna be focusing on the performance of the GPUs. We're not gonna be looking at the visual differences that ray tracing can make in Cyberpunk. We have already covered that though back in our launch video for Cyberpunk 2077 in December where we looked at the differences with ray tracing on versus off and also the image quality differences that DLSS can make. So if you do want to see all of that, I'll leave a link down in the description. But like I said, this video is very much on how the GPUs perform. We did use the same test sequence that we did in that initial video from December. So it's at the beginning of the game, at the end of the rescue mission, as Jackie is driving V back to his apartment. It is a scripted sequence, but it is also highly repeatable. Finally, just to outline the testing we have done today, we've tested all of our GPUs at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. We started off using the medium ray tracing preset, which only enables shadows and the medium ray trace lighting quality. We then tested the ultra ray tracing preset, which adds in reflections and also bumps lighting quality up to ultra. Then we also benchmarked each of the individual ray trace settings so we can see how they scale and we'll wrap up with a look at DLSS and how that can change the overall picture. Kicking off with 1080p using the medium ray tracing preset then, it's a fairly busy chart so I'll briefly explain how I've laid this out. We've grouped results by GPU, first showing performance with ray tracing disabled and then showing performance with ray tracing enabled. This does mean that there is a lot of data on show, but I really do think it's crucial to show the performance hit when going from ray tracing disabled to ray tracing enabled, as that really does give you the full picture. And then the data itself is sorted by the average frame rate with ray tracing enabled in descending order. So diving into the results, honestly, I think the first key takeaway is that not even the RX 6900 XT is able to hit 60 FPS at 1080p using just the medium ray trace settings. Nope, in fact, it averaged 46 FPS in our testing, and that's a reduction of a whopping 62% compared to playing without ray tracing at all. And remember, this is only the medium ray tracing preset, so there's still some settings that haven't been enabled. That level of performance from the 6900 XT means NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti is actually faster at 1080p, and remember, the 6900 XT is meant to be a 900 pound GPU compared to the 369 pound MSRP for the 3060 Ti, so that is definitely saying something. Elsewhere, we can see that both the 6800 and 6800 XT are averaging in the high 30s to low 40 FPS region, which I'd say is still playable, but enabling ray tracing results in frame rate drops of over 60% for both GPUs. The 6700 XT though saw its 1% lows drop down to 25 FPS. So that's not what I'd call playable and it's certainly not enjoyable. And again, this is only 1080p medium ray tracing settings. At 1080p using the ultra ray trace preset then, things look even worse for AMD's GPUs. Here, not even the 6900 XT can hold above 30 FPS at all times. As we can see, its 1% lows drop down to 28 FPS. 
the 3060 Ti is actually 14% faster than the 1600 XT here, and that's without even factoring in DLSS, which would significantly increase that margin, as we will see later. In fairness, NVIDIA's GPUs do also suffer big drops in performance when ray tracing is enabled, but it's nowhere near as severe as we see with the AMD GPUs. Using these settings, the 6900 XT performs 73% worse than with no ray tracing at all, where the hit for the 3060 Ti is 51%. It's still very significant, of course, but not as bad, and again, that's with no DLSS enabled to speed things back up. Below that, we have the 6800 XT, which averages 30 FPS, but with its 1% lows dipping down to 25 FPS. While at the very bottom of the chart, this 6700 XT saw 1% lows down at 18 FPS, while it averaged 22 FPS. That's clearly not a playable result, and it's almost half the frame rate of the 3060 Ti. Dare we try gaming at 1440p with ray tracing enabled on these AMD GPUs? Well, if we start with the medium ray tracing preset for now, here the 6900 XT is able to match the RTX 3060 Ti when it was slower at 1080p, so that is certainly good news, but it still couldn't hold above 30 FPS, with the 1% lows hitting 27 FPS. That means performance is still 62% worse with ray tracing enabled compared to no ray tracing, which is the same scaling we saw at 1080p, so things are certainly consistent, they're just not good. As another comparison, the RTX 3080 is actually 52% faster than the 6900 XT with ray tracing enabled, despite actually being 6% slower when ray tracing isn't being used. As for the other AMD GPUs, well, if the 6900 XT can't manage a stable 30 FPS, neither can the rest with the 6800 XT averaging 28 FPS, while the RX 6800 managed 25 FPS. The newest addition to the RDNA 2 family, the RX 6700 XT, averaged 20 FPS here, with 1% lows of 18 FPS. Stepping up to 1440p Ultra Ray Trace settings now, it really is just more of the same. The AMD GPUs are getting hammered here, with the 6900 XT seeing its frame rates drop off by 73% compared to playing with no ray tracing. That gives it an average frame rate of just 22 FPS. No doubt about it, these settings are demanding for any GPU, as only the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 are able to average above 30 FPS using these settings. But once more, that is before DLSS is turned on, and that is a real game changer for the NVIDIA GPUs. Now, I was going to show 4K data, but honestly, I don't think there's any point. Not even the RTX 3090 can average above 30 FPS when using the medium ray trace preset at native resolution. I did test all of the data though, so if you do want to see 4K results for whatever reason, then head over to the written article on kitguru.net. Here though, I'm gonna move on to look at the performance scaling of the individual ray trace settings found within Cyberpunk. So as a reminder, we have ray trace reflections, shadows, and then ray trace lighting, the latter of which includes emissive lighting, ambient occlusion, and if you set it all the way to the psycho mode, it also uses global illumination. For this testing, I'm only using the RX 6800 at 1080p, but we do also compare it to the RTX 3070. So, starting at the top, we can see the RX 6800 averaged 99 FPS at 1080p with no ray tracing enabled, so that's kind of the baseline performance. The RTX 3070, meanwhile, hit 89 FPS, so it's actually the NVIDIA GPU which is the slower of the two in rasterization terms. Enabling ray trace reflections, though, on the RX 6800 drops frame rates by 58%, bringing the average down to 42 FPS. The RTX 3070, though, only saw a 30% hit to performance, so it was still averaging over 60 FPS. As for the ray trace shadows, well, this is the least demanding of the ray trace effects, but it's still almost halved the frame rate for the RX 6800. Comparatively, 
the RTX 3070 is 33% faster than the 6800 when only using ray trace shadows, as its frame rate dropped by just 22% when enabling this effect. Then we can come to the three ray trace lighting effects. These do get very punishing quite quickly, especially if you want to use the global illumination mode as part of the psycho settings. That alone drops performance by 71% when using the RX 6800. The RTX 3070 still loses 47% performance using the same setting, so it is a very significant drop off, but still that is able to keep above 40 FPS when the 6800 couldn't hold above 30. The key takeaway for me here from looking at the individual ray trace settings is that by only enabling the least demanding of these ray trace settings, performance still dropped by almost half for the RX 6800. The RTX 3070 still suffers for sure, but the hit to performance is nowhere near as big. Of course, Nvidia's RTX GPUs can also use DLSS to boost performance, with only very minor changes to overall image quality. Again, if you want to see more visual comparisons of the DLSS modes, check out the previous Cyberpunk video we did back in December. Comparing the RX 6800 and RTX 3070 again though, we can see just how much of a difference DLSS can make. Without it, the RTX 3070 averages 43 FPS at 1080p using ultra ray trace settings. That still makes it almost twice as fast as the RX 6800, but if you whack on DLSS quality mode, the RTX 3070 shoots up to 70 FPS on average. That means it is now almost three times as fast as the RX 6800, clearly showing how DLSS is best used when your frame rates are pretty low to begin with. The same also goes for 1440p. DLSS quality mode can be used in tandem with ultra ray trace settings to transform the gameplay. So the RTX 3070 goes from 27 FPS on average without DLSS up to 49 FPS on average with DLSS quality mode. So it really is the difference between an unplayable gaming experience if you're using ray tracing compared to something I would say is very playable hitting over 40 FPS. Take those numbers against the RX 6800, which can't even hit 20 FPS at 1440p. And again, the RTX 3070 is almost three times as fast. For me, it really does just hammer home the point that if you want to use ray tracing, DLSS really is a must have to help regain that lost performance. Right now though, as we know, AMD just doesn't have an answer to the technology. So there we have it. That is how AMD's latest GPUs perform in Cyberpunk when using ray tracing. I did expect a bit of a bloodbath, but that is exactly what we got. There's also a few key takeaways you could take from this data, including the fact that at 1080p, the 3060 Ti is actually faster than the 6900 XT. You could also look to the fact that at 1440p, none of the AMD GPUs could hold above 30 FPS at all times, even when just using the medium ray tracing preset. For me though, what I think this data really shows is just how badly AMD needs a competitor to DLSS. That technology is really what allows the Nvidia GPUs to enable ray tracing, but still have a playable frame rate, an option that just isn't currently available for those AMD GPUs. So I really do hope that we will see AMD's competitor to DLSS coming soon. It's slated for this year. So let's hope that happens and let's hope it's good. For now though, if you do have an AMD GPU and you were thinking about enabling ray tracing in Cyberpunk, my recommendation is just don't bother. Even by just enabling ray trace shadows, your frame rate will effectively be cut in two and the shadows really don't do much for the overall visual appearance of the game. Anyway guys, so that is gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up and of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have an AMD GPU? Have you tried out ray tracing in Cyberpunk? And what sort of performance did you get? As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can find a link to our merch store down in the description. And while you're there, why not come over and join our Discord server? It would also be awesome if you guys would consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and also get access to exclusive giveaways. 
That is it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.